We have an amazing guest who needs no introduction. He is a multiple New York Times bestselling author, host of several PBS specials, as well as the founder of the Eat to Live Retreat in San Diego. Please welcome Dr. Joel Furman. Happy New Year, Dr. Furman, and thank you so much for doing this on a holiday. My pleasure. Happy New Year to you and, of course, all your listeners. Well, thank you. You know, Dr. Furman, I've interviewed you many times, but almost every time I've interviewed you, it's it's been about weight loss or food addiction because that's what I have been involved with with many years. But now I'm kind of switching my gears and trying to help people not just survive cancer, but thrive regardless of what stage they're in. And I did not even know this. My sister had to tell me that you actually have a course and it's called Combat Cancer and Autoimmune Disease. And it's available and people can buy it anytime on your website. And I had no idea you had such a course. It's fabulous. I listened to it about three times and I'd love to an ask you some questions about some of the material in the course. Sure. And, you know, even though, you know, I'm, I'm a board certified family physician taking care of a variety of diseases, and most people I've cared for over the years of my, you know, my last 35 years of practice have been reversing diabetes and heart disease and autoimmune conditions. But I've seen many, many, many hundreds of people with diagnoses of cancer. And the outcomes when we're using precision nutrition the outcomes have been literally spectacular. And that's a big part of my practice now that I um, never thought that would happen this way. But in any case, what I'm saying right now and what I think that the nutritional science supports is that nutritional excellence and precision nutrition for people who have cancer has, you could say, better long-term outcomes when you compare it to chemotherapy, radiation, or conventional treatments. So we're saying that um, by ignoring or just doing conventional treatments, you're not getting the possibility you have to extend your life, to prevent, to, um, and, and of course, we're talking about not just putting a person in remission, but, person, but cancer can be a very slow growing disease and people could live 10, 15 years with, with cancer and it's enjoying their life and preventing the cancer cells from replicating ra rapidly and taking that course. So we've seen people that have reversed their cancer, and we've seen people just dramatically extend their lifespan um, who utilize nutritional excellence and, and, and you could say precision supplementation geared towards their particular condition. That's fantastic. You know, you wrote a position paper called Preventing and Treating Cancer. Can you give us some of the highlights? So yes, the position paper is showing that if we look at studies on certain food and food and herbs and substances, we find that these certain products like mushrooms, like flax seeds, like wheat germ, like curcumins from turmeric, like, you know, we have these substances that show that they're protective against cells becoming cancerous. And the same studies that show that these things prevent cancer can actually create cancer remissions or people slowing cancer or be effective people who have cancer. So the first thing we're talking about, the first key concept here is the same dietary and supplemental factors that prevent cancer are also effective for people who have cancer. And we should also say that almost all people have cancer. Let me say that one more time, that most of us have had exposure to some cancer causing elements in our lives that have hit the DNA to cause damage, to create cancer cells in our body. And then so many people, for example, who have breast cancer may recover from that breast cancer before it even can become a mass that can be seen on a mammogram. They may get cancer and have it go away again. So cancer cells come and go. And now scientists are estimating with new advances in, in cancer blood biopsying or now we're seeing that probably the majority of adult Americans have cancer. So when you get a mammogram that detects cancer that's big enough to be seen by the human eye, it's been there probably 10 or 15 years. And now that we can de detect those cancer cells in the blood, maybe 10 years before a mammogram can, we'll find that like 75 to 80% of women over the age of 65 have breast cancer. The question is really, it's not diagnosing these people with cancer, it's how should people live in today's, and how should we all live to keep our body living longer, enjoying our life and keeping cancer cells in check. I recently was in the cancer infusion center of my local hospital and they had a vending machine. And I bet you can imagine what was in the vending machine. 
Yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know what I did is I took a picture, I posted it on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. I tagged Sutter Hospital and I said, you need to do better for your cancer patients. And they invited me to be on the nutrition advisory board. <laughs> That's cool. So you yeah. Know. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I don't mind so much that they're selling such unhealthy snacks. But when I had my lung biopsy and I hadn't eaten for 24 hours and they finally, after my pneumothorax was stable, let me go home and I was hungry, all I could get was a turkey sandwich. Well, yeah. They That's said they, they didn't have any fruits or vegetables at this particular hospital, apparently. So, <laughs> yeah. And, the hospitals with McDonald's in their, in their lobbies, you know, it's like, yeah. Children's hospitals, too. Medical care is complete divorce from nutrition. And I'm, of course, you know, on the mission to, you know, I'm not anti-medical care, but I want people to have a realistic viewpoint of what medical care could do compared to the more miraculous and effective treatments of nutritional excellence. And I use the word nutritarian diet to describe this diet of nutritional excellence to maximize human longevity, but I use precision nutrition to, de to modify the dietary and supplemental recommendations to be designed for a person's particularly unique situation, their condition, their disease, and their particular. So we're talking about using more precision nutrition to enable better outcomes, which modifies the diet further to match the particular condition. Like we don't give a person with, let's say, you know, a brain tumor, the same diet we give a person with breast cancer, for example. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does the, your nutritional recommendation vary depending on the type of cancer the person has in the stage of their cancer? That's correct. Yes, it does. Like the EGCG, the certains from green teas and the curcumin complex is derived from turmeric. And so we're, and so, so we're taking, and like raw garlic. So we're taking some of these substances and not just giving people to eat them in their diet, but to spread them out through the day. Like we're spreading out medications every five hours. And still, when you get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night between one and three in the morning, take it then as well. So the cancer cells never get a chance where they're not being, where they're having the replication not, not being suppressed. One of the things I love the most about you is your love and promotion of vegetables. And I'm curious why it's important in general to eat not just raw, but also cooked vegetables, but even more important when somebody has cancer to have both. That's right. Our immune system is dependent mostly on our green vegetable consumption. And I'll say this simple tech, simple point right now is that green vegetable consumption is the most important factor in governing our longevity. So if you could ask the person, what's the most important factor governing, governing a person's length of life? And the answer is how much green vegetables they consume over their lifetime. The more you eat, the better, and the more you take in, the better. And the reason why we need to add green vegetables cooked is it enables people to get more of the green vegetable compounds into their body and into their blood. So your the ability of the cell to fight cancer has to do with the nutrient density of these phytonutrients in the cell, the concentration of the phytonutrients in the cell in conjunction with the removal of toxins. So the lat, so low level of toxicity and the high level of the nutrient density in the cell, which means lowering body weight and, you know, um, to increase nutrient concentration in the tissues. And then we're talking about a high intake of all of these four types of green vegetables. So we have two basic types, the cruciferous vegetable and the non-cruciferous vegetable. And the, the cruciferous vegetable is the broccoli, cabbage, bok choy, kale, collards, watercress, arugula, um, and these are very, very important to take in raw and cooked. If somebody has cancer, would you suggest no animal products whatsoever? Well, thanks for the question. Do I think it's better to be 100% vegan or to use like animal products once a week or so? Then the answer would be, well, I don't know, but I have to go to what science is available on that subject and see what the evidence says. And the evidence we have from the Seven Day Adventist Health Study 2 demonstrates that even once a week serving of animal products does, inc does increase risk, particularly of cardiovascular death. So, and most likely of, now I particularly would be advising a 100% vegan diet for a person with a cancer diagnosis, because we know animal protein, particularly the amino acid methionine, can be 
promoting cancer, can allow cancer cell replication. Remember I talked earlier in this, um, in this discussion we're having that we want to suffocate the cancer cell's ability to replicate. And we suffocate that replication with these compounds, these curcumin and compounds from, from turmeric and green tea and mushroom extracts. We, we, and we, we suffocate them so they can't replicate. Likewise, by keeping the protein low, it makes them also harder to replicate, which means that we're not only avoiding all animal products, we're also avoiding um, plant products that are concentrated in protein. Dr. Furman, I just really have one more question for you. And you, you've kind of said it, but maybe you can just, you know, uh, what's the word when you do something uh, consolidated? Yeah. So what message of hope would you share with someone currently facing a cancer diagnosis? I would say that um, you could have many pleasurable years of life in front of you. And it's your job to get the most pleasure and enjoyment from your life possible. We're all gonna, we're not gonna live, we're all gonna pass away someday. And you may live longer than me, or I may live longer than you. We never know what's gonna happen. We can get, but we can get hit by a car tomorrow, or I can get whatever can, you know, we can just could die in our sleep, whatever, of a, of a hemorrhagic stroke. But whatever the problem is, is we, got our, we have a job to get as much, to enjoy our life as much as we possibly can every single day and take good care of our health and be grateful for, the, for every day we're alive.